What are you doing today? Hi there, it's Timmy Joe, making videos, things and stuff. Today on the program, I got me a good deal on you some used parts for once. I got me a uh, Core i5-7600K, uh, which doesn't seem like all that great a CPU these days, but uh, a nice Asus Prime Z270A motherboard, you know, Prime. It's not the worst, it's certainly not the, the best. But, uh, you know, it's just a motherboard that can overclock this CPU. And a CryoRig H7, all for $220 Canadian, which is pretty good considering I just did a video on how uh, brand new the Core i3-9100F is about $110 Canadian, uh, you know, plus taxes and shipping. And then a really crappy motherboard for that was like $110. So essentially, I got a much better overclockable CPU with DDR4 supports. This isn't like older i5 stuff. This is the same as what's in the current, you know, line. It's 14 nanometers. It's uh, Sky, it's KB Lake. Yeah, so it's it's not bad. Uh, and we're gonna look at some IPC, we're gonna look at some gaming uh, with this whole platform because I just got a taste for what the budget of now you know, I, I, it's not going to be for long because there are new processors from Intel and AMD coming out soon, which are quad cores, but with hyper threading, which really changes the game. Uh, but, you know, when this launch, this was $220, $250, depending on availability and the time frame and stuff like that. A motherboard, you'd have to get a Z series to get overclocking. This would have been pretty expensive, mid range, high end gaming platform uh, for most people people back in 2017 uh you know before amd really changed the game and uh i want to go ahead and put well um here i'll put this in here without breaking anything fingers crossed i'm going to test it not with the cryo rig but i know it's not uh going to be i'm not going to delay it because i plan on reselling this but uh i'm sure with just little bitty four cores and no hyper threading this thing should probably take care of it. This is uh, one of the newer Corsair IQ H150Is. 360mm rad on Corsair's uh, newest high-end platform with some RGB and stuff. But this should be a massive cooler in order to get, I don't know, let's see, 5.2 gigahertz on this platform. Probably not. But uh, then we'll do some gaming tests with a you know, 2080Ti and see quad-core at its limits what it can do for you in these higher end games, in these new games for 2020, these, you know, uh, Dooms and these Resident Evils and these games that, you know, are starting to take up some freaking, uh, some CPU cycles because things have really changed in the last year, three years, haven't they? So I'm gonna go ahead and button this thing on, do some gaming tests, do some uh, CPU tests, do some overclocking, and uh, we'll get to the, we'll get to the point. We'll make it happen, we'll see. Is your core, uh, you went and spent some money on this system back uh, you know three years ago hoping it would last you is it time to upgrade or when you if you just maybe overclock this a little further is it able to support a 2080 ti i don't know let's let's check it out Woo! So it's been a couple days and I've been playing around with the 7600K, overclocking it, putting a big giant cooler on it, making it happen, and playing some video games on it with the RTX 2080 Ti. And uh, I gotta say, this whole round of quad core testing I've done recently with the 9100F and now with this very, very fast example of the same kind of CPU, it's changed my uh, business on the, the quad cores a little bit. I was very much anti quad core until I started playing with this and realized there is something to be said about it. But then again, that whole point will be moot as soon as the new CPUs are available, the 3300X and the whatever the hell the Intel one's gonna be called that's supposed to be quad-core with hyper-threading or quad-core with SMT so that 
we get eight threads finally on the i3 on the lower end and you know they're going to be around the same price you know close to the 9100f's price hundred dollars ish so that is a very very good price point but if we're looking at this in 2020 and this is about to become kind of obsolete based on the new stuff that's coming out maybe you'll happen upon a good deal on a 7600k because guess what this guy upgraded to and sold this you know just to kind of cover his costs just guess absolutely easiest question ever the guy upgraded to a 3600 an r5 3600 a ryzen 6 core 12 thread cpu because he was able a couple years later to spend the exact same amount of money on the way better class of CPU, and why wouldn't you? And hopefully things are really going to progress from here. And quad cores, you know, they're going to be on the market used, so you might want to know what kind of performance you can get. So this is all kind of scientific. So I got this thing to 5.2 gigahertz with this big giant AIO, and I mean, it ain't hard, uh, but I mean, I think I won the silicon lottery a little bit with uh, even this. Five, five gigahertz is usually like, uh, you know, as far as it goes, but 5.2 when this really good at 1.4 volts so that's it's pretty damn good so what does that actually match in clock speed that i also own 9900k so i have a 9900k that will do the exact same thing at 1.4 volts it will do 5.2 gigahertz so i get to test them exactly so when i load up cinebench r20 and run the single threaded test it actually did surprise me that they scored identically at 5.2 gigahertz. They both got 537, 538-ish points. And the uh, quad core only here ended up getting 2,034 to uh, the uh, 9900K's uh, 5,359. So it's, it's doing pretty well. It's getting more than a third of the score with a lot less threads with a quarter of the threads. So it's still pretty valid gaming CPU. So when it comes down to testing the 9900K versus the 7600K, uh, you can actually expect to get very similar FPS, which kind of, it blows my mind that, yeah, I'm playing games from 2020 and they're not actually taking that much more advantage of having so many more threads. It kind of blows my mind. So I'll throw up some gaming benchmarks here for a second, and then we'll discuss when we come back where this thing's shortfalls really are, because you know what? This is about to come become like absolutely obsolete in the new realm of uh, computer processors. And yeah, there are reasons why. <laughs> Okay, so you saw some gaming benchmarks, and I know it's not a huge sample size. I mean, this is just a motherboard I got, uh, you know, in a really good deal, $220 with this CPU. And you know what? It's not going to seem like such a great deal for a while, so I'm going to package this up in a system. It's not really worth doing that much more on a quad core. I just did a video on one different situation, but uh, I was very surprised at those benchmarks, the fact that. The, like average FPS was fairly similar, especially in certain games like 
Resident Evil, and I mean, they were almost dead on in Fortnite, which didn't make sense, because that's actually one of the games that really felt like it was on a quad core sometimes, but uh, essentially, you can totally game with a high-end graphics card if you're willing to do, even, I mean, on the 9100F, it would probably be all right. But if you want to get up to 5 gigahertz, you can put a pretty high-end graphics card, uh, you know, a GTX 1080 or uh, a 2070, and get away with it and get pretty damn good FPS. But if you're going to be playing in online multiplayer games, that's where this thing really starts to waver. Because, wait, is that a word? Wait, it starts to shit in the bed. <laughs> There we go. Because you got to make sure like everything in your taskbar is closed. Okay. You want to play, you know, competitively and you want to play like with a 1440p monitor, high FPS. It, you can do it. I was playing on a 1440p monitor, 144 hertz, having a great experience 95% of the time. But there were, what's this 5% of the time, especially in Apex Legends and in Fortnite, when the it's just stuttery as all hell for just a split second. Just a split second. And it's usually when an asset is loading, like, you know, when they, uh, the storm eye starts, you know, the purple stuff in the sky in Fortnite starts happening, and you see, like, those flash of lightning. That would make me go... Like, it would make me jump for a second. And, uh, you know, when, when you're falling from, you know, and there's all the player assets being loaded onto the island, that's a lot less smooth. But, if you're willing to be patient for a second and you get playing, it's actually not very bad. And you're getting very similar FPS as we saw in those benchmarks to the 9900K. There, your mileage will vary. That was a very small sample size of games. But, is that going to be, you know, is it a good idea to think this is a future-proof scenario just because the IPC, like the, you know, the actual core working hard is the same as the 9900K? Well, not particularly because we're in an era where everything, like you're, you're, you're going to want eight threads minimum for sure coming up soon. And that's why AMD has facilitated that 3300X. That's why the new i3 is going to be quad core with hyper threading, much like a 7700K, because I guarantee you if I had the 7700K in this, running it at 5.2 gigahertz, we'd have a pretty damn similar situation on the 9900K to this, and only, you know, some games would really, really benefit from that 9900K's, uh, you know, performance. So I guess what I'm getting at, is I bought a 7600K, don't plan on keeping it too long, and I wanted to make a video about it, see how far we could overclock it, 5.2 gigahertz, see how high we could get in Cinebench, 2034, which is pretty damn good for this uh, level of CPU, 537 for a single core score, uh, if you like Cinebench R15, which I, I'd like that one better, but I mean, people yell at me when I use it, uh, it gets about 800, which is pretty damn high, 800 points for a quad core only, so pretty cool that, uh, you know, this was this easy to get up from running at 5.2 gigahertz, just a few settings in the BIOS, I couldn't go any further than that, no matter how hard I tried, even at 1.5 volts, I couldn't get this thing to go any higher than 5.2 gigahertz, I can go a little higher on the 9900K, but it gets really dicey, of course, that near 100 degrees, uh, when you're running, you know, full, full bore on that in an AVX workload, but this thing here, is still pretty impressive and uh, if you're out there and you know there are these CPUs you know go out and you find an i5 on a budget that can overclock and you can get you know maybe a decent cooler for it I mean this guy had uh, what was it this cryoreg h7 on it and he had it overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz that's that's good enough go ahead and lock in 4.8 gigahertz you can pretty uh, put a pretty good graphics card on one of these and still get away with some pretty damn good performance for how long your mileage will vary but um i gotta say this did change my opinion on quad cores quite a bit quite a bit pretty decent scores man so i'm out watching me joe instagram and twitter and this has been a quick or long video on quad cores 7600k 5.2 gigahertz max in the overclocks out seeing how good a gaming experience you can get and it turns out you can get a pretty good one but you're gonna have some stuttery messes sometimes and from here on out 
the, the budget CPUs are all going to be at least eight threads, and I think that is going to make it so the next couple years worth of games really puts this thing by the wayside. So I guess that will remain to be seen. I'm out watching me join Instagram, Twitter. Thank you very much for watching me here. This has been a Corsair H3. H150i RGB, I'm looking at the first look, I don't know, just talking about overclocking an i5, Timmy Joe Styles, see you guys in another video. <gasps>